Hi everyone, it's Gina and I'm actually taking part in a, a challenge that was put on by Dr. Shante. I am going to put her link below this video so that you can see the other uh, videos that were done throughout this challenge. And this was called Thrive in Five and it's being put on by different members of the G2G ministries here in Tampa Terrace, Florida. So when I was tagged by Sister Veronica, I almost immediately knew what I wanted to talk about because I was was kind of convicted on this um, recently. So my topic today is what does spring cleaning have to do with the Bible? That's what I want to talk about, spring cleaning, because, you know, this is early April. It's um, just the beginning of spring. And most people around this time of the year tend to do what's called spring cleaning, right? And spring cleaning tends to be things that are done in the in the physical, right? We go through our physical environment, we declutter stuff, we decide what we want to keep, what we want to get rid of. Um, some of us may do like digital decluttering, which I did recently. So I went through a lot of my emails and, that I had accumulated and just got rid of thousands and thousands of emails. So there's digital decluttering but one day i was actually doing some physical cleaning and uh, going through my wardrobe and getting some stuff out to donate and uh, this thought just or like this question just kind of popped into my head and this is when i said you know i kind of felt convicted because the thought that popped in was okay gina yeah you you go right ahead do your your physical decluttering, get rid of the clothes that you no longer want, clean up your physical environment, while at the same time you have all of this stuff going on in your mind. And that was like, oh my gosh, you know, there's this emotional and mental decluttering that I also had to do. And uh, when that thought popped in, I was like, oh my gosh, that's like a whole other level of quote unquote spring cleaning so i thought you know let me go ahead and talk about that because i know that i'm not the only one who's going through these kind of things and for me the big thing over the last few months has been grief and i know that there's a lot of people out there who are dealing with grief right um over the last just the last year alone I, and I, I don't like using the word lost, but I lost what, five, five people that were close to me. And four of them were within a three month period. Two of them were literally like a week apart. So I've been going through all of that emotion and then not include the year before that when I ended up losing my smile baby sister and a dear friend of mine and a, um, one of my cousins lost her daughter and it was just so much that's been going on right and i know that i'm not the only person dealing with this right but it's not just it's not just grief that's just one of the emotions that was a that's been the huge thing for me has been the grief and when so when i uh I, I, god convicted me that morning said yeah go ahead clean out your physical environment, get rid of all of this stuff that you don't want. But what about all of the grief that you're dealing with? When are you going to be with that? Right. And the the last person that passed away that was really close to me um, was a, a lady I've been taking care of for like the last almost a year. Her, both her and her mom passed away within three months of each other. And uh, that has been, yeah, so it's, it's, it's fresh, right? So when I was um, sitting there thinking about this, I thought, yeah, you know, how long am I going to hold on to this? Because I know that this is something that she would not want me to to just hold on to. I find myself like crying uh, at the drop of a hat. I smell something and, you know, I'm reminded of her or I hear something. And but so you I'm, I'm sure that a lot of you out there understand what I'm talking about. But when I was sitting down thinking about, you know, how do I present this? And um, I don't want this to come over like a, a negative tone because the thing is, it's not, it's not negative. I'm going to give you Bible passages where God wants us to get rid of all of this. He wants to fill us with so much 
uh, more um, better things than what we're currently dealing with and what we're current, currently hold on, holding on to. So things like like um, grief, like I mentioned, things like guilt, things like bitterness, like jealousy, doubt, anger, self pity, um, all of these type of emotions, right? Regret, um, negativity, all of those things that I know a lot of us are holding on to, and and we we think that we're doing ourselves a favor by holding on to these things when in reality we really aren't. It's just causing us a lot of, um, we, a lot of us may not realize it, but there's a lot of physical effects that are occurring within our bodies, biological effects that are taking place, right? And the thing is in the Bible, it says, and Matthew 18 verse seven, it says offenses will come. And our offenses are gonna look like a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Right. So it, it, it states in the Bible offenses will come, but it's what we do with those offenses that really matter at the end of the day. Right. Because one of the things that we end up doing is. We hold on to all of these things, we hold on to the guilt, we hold on to the grief, we hold on to the anger, to the self pity, to the to the regret, all of those things. And it's if you if we really believe that our body is a vessel it is a sacred vessel it's a, a type a, a, to use a more modern word is a container okay so if we consider that our body is a, a sacred container and we're filling our body with all of this stuff all of the bitterness the jealousy the guilt the grief the the, the sickness all of that we we're constantly filling our bodies with this where are we allowing god to fill us with what he wants to fill us with Right. Because we are so filled with all of this and it's taking up all of the space. Right. In our sacred container. So the my my our encouragement to you is we, we need to start to let go of all of this. So while we're thinking about decluttering all of our physical environments, we also need to be really thinking about decluttering our sacred containers, right? The sacred container that holds our soul. The, the the human body is just a house for our soul. And if we allow our uh, the house, which is the physical body, to get decluttered with all of this other, for lack of a better word, junk, then you know um, we're we're just going to contribute to the breakdown of of that body. And so let's hear what God has to say in the Bible about you know, getting rid of all of this and what he wants to put into us, right? So in the Bible, it talks about, you know, God says, cast all of our burdens and all of our cares on him, right? So everything that we've been dealing with, the grief, the guilt, the bitterness, the jealousy, the regret, the self-pity, the, the doubt, all of that stuff, we are supposed to cast on him. We're not supposed to hold on to it. Right. We're supposed to give it all to him because we are just kind of holding all of on to that stuff within our sacred vessel. And it's it's not doing us any. Any good, really. Right. So God wants to give us peace and joy for all of the grief that we have been going through over the last couple of years or the last couple of months or weeks. God wants to give us peace in the place of worry. So I know a lot of us are worried about, you know, we might have lost jobs over the, the last couple of years. How are we going to pay our bills, right? God wants to give us peace in the place of all of that worry. He wants to give us abundance in the place of lack. Right. So we walk around the word of how we're going to take care of our bills, not where that that's kind of a lack mentality. And God, that's not what God wants for us. Right. He wants to give us abundance. And it, he states that he wants to give us abundance in the place of black. He wants to give us confidence, freedom of mind, freedom of thought in the place of all of the guilt that we might be carrying around for one reason or another. Right. In, in the Bible, it says we are to give no place to the enemy, no place, right? But the thing is, when we hold on to all of these things, when we hold on to these things, that is exactly what we are doing, right? We are giving place to the enemy. These things are considered to be enemies within our bodies. We are to give no place to the enemy. I know how many of us go to bed at night and we kind of ruminate over you know, something that somebody might have done to us throughout the day, right? 
And we just lay there in bed and we are ruminating over this thing, how this person hurt us and how that person hurt us and how that person said something mean to us that they shouldn't have said. And it goes on and on and on, not realizing whoever that person was, they have completely forgotten about, about it. But here we are holding on to this and we're just allowing it to just kind of, you know, bubble and fester. And we're thinking that we are, you know, we're helping the situation by constantly going over the situation, right? When in fact, all the, the only person that's really hurting is us. It's hurting us because that person has moved on from it, but here we are and it's, we're constantly thinking about it and thinking about it. And all we're doing is literally like putting more power into the other person's hand. They've moved on, but we are the one that's the ones that are causing ourselves to get sick with worry and with, you know, with anger and all of those things by constantly thinking about the situation instead of forgive, forgiving and moving on. And I, when I was thinking about this, I, I remembered the first time I really realize what forgiveness meant and forgiveness is it's not necessarily meant for the other person it's meant for you right when you forgive whether or not you got an apology from the other person you're really kind of releasing all of that energy that's behind it the anger the the energy of the anger that's behind it you're you're forgiving the other person, whether they've asked for forgiveness or not, whether they have apologized or not, because you, what you're doing now is creating that peace within you. You're not allowing that situation to bother you anymore, right? The anger behind that situation has been released. And when I really figured out what forgiveness was, that was, that just opened like a whole new avenue for me right because I, there are times when I really thought that I had forgiven when in fact I had forgiven but I hadn't you know let go some of that emotion behind it and when you let go the emotion attached to it then you realize that you know this, those those um, events don't really bother you anymore right and that's what God wants for us to release to, to forgive right? because it's not about the other person it's forgiving is about you. So in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 6, it says, there's a time to seek, there's a time to lose, there's a time to keep, there's a time to cast away. And that's, um, for me, that's what that whole, that this passage is all about is, you know, getting rid of stuff, it's decluttering stuff, but it's not just the physical environment, it's also the emotional body, right? We have got to learn to release all of the, the, the pain, the hurt that other pe people might have caused us and that we just keep holding on within our bodies. And God doesn't want that for us. In Philippians 4, verse 19, he says, God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. Right. And a lot of us walk around with, you know, constant worry about things, worry about how we're going to be paying certain bills, how we're going to be, you know, getting a certain thing accomplished, whatever that certain thing might be. And it says here, Philippians 4.19, God is going to supply all your needs, not some, not the ones he thinks are appropriate, not the ones that, you know, he's going to do some now and then maybe some later if he finds he says, God's going to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3, it says that he is going to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So when we start to release all of these ashes that we have been carrying around with us, you know, and the, the ashes are all of those wounds, right? All of the, the self, the self pity, all of the doubt, all the regret, all of the grief, all of those are the ashes that we have been carrying around. And God wants to take those all away from us and to give us beauty instead of ashes, right? He wants to give us joy and peace instead of mourning and grief. And he wants to cloak us with a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair that we've been carrying around. 
So uh, this could also be the illness, right? A lot of us hold on to these, you know, these ashes, right? All of the things I mentioned earlier. And uh, we don't realize that all of these can actually con contribute to physical illness that we might be experiencing, right? And God wants to take away all of that as well. It could be things like depression, the anger I mentioned, all of those things um, can contribute to illness and God wants to take it all away from us and just give us so much beauty for all of these ashes that we're, we've been carrying around. You know, I don't know how many of you know this, but I am an artist, right? And there's a story of um, Leonardo da Vinci and he happened to be painting this um, portrait that has uh, so a painting he was doing that just happened to have um, Jesus in it, right? And uh, in his studio, there were a bunch of kids. And, you know, kids can get sometimes when they're in studios, especially if they're, they're young kids. You know, they might get a little rambunctious at times. And one of the kids happened to knock something over and create a spill. And just in that, you know, split second, Leonardo da Vinci gets really angry. And he's, you know, you can just picture him kind of going off on the kids and and uh, probably regretting that he even invited them into the studio to come and watch him paint all of this stuff. And at one point, you know, he decided, OK, let me just get back to business and I'm just going to go and paint again. And like I said, he just happened to be, you know, painting uh, uh, on the face of Jesus at this point. And he picked up his brush. And he the story goes that he was about to continue painting the face of Jesus. And he stopped and he realized that he just couldn't, right? He just couldn't do it. And he realized that this was because he had all of this anger inside of him because of the episode that had happened with the, the, the little kid that had knocked over and, made, and created the spill and he had gotten so angry. And he, he realized that, gosh, there's no way that I can paint the face of Jesus with all of this anger inside of me so he spent the time spent some time getting rid working through that anger you know before he actually continue continue with this painting and can you imagine you know painting the face of jesus with anger inside of you he leonardo da vinci this was 500 years ago over 500 years ago realized he could not paint an image of christ with anger in his heart so for me, the ultimate example of forgiveness was Jesus as he hung on the cross. Can you imagine watching Jesus is there? He's hanging on the cross, you know, nailed to this cross. He's bleeding and uh, he's looking down and there are all of these soldiers down there. They're throwing dice. They're making bets. They're, you know, kind of deciding um, on who is going to get, get his clothing, that sort of thing. And and Jesus said he knew it, that his time had come and it was a moment before he took his last breath. And he said to, to, to God, he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And as I was preparing this, it was like, wow, that is like the ultimate expression of emotional decluttering, of emotional spring cleaning. Because Jesus realized that he couldn't leave this earth with any kind of hard feelings through, um, to anybody who had, you know, had done him wrong, especially the people who had actually nailed him to the cross and who he was now watching, kind of, you know, kind of placing bets on who was going to get his own clothing after he died, right? But yet Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Or they don't know what they're doing. He he knew that he had to release all of that emotion around what he was witnessing, no matter how much pain he was in, no matter how much hurt he was experiencing. He had made the ultimate decision. Um, you know, well, God made the decision for him, and he said, you know, thy will be done, and he accepted it. And then, as he's about to take his last breath, he's made the decision to just forgive everyone so that as he left this earth, he left with a clean mind. And to me, that was like the ultimate imagery, the ultimate um, 
visualization, if you can call it that, of, of forgiveness was when Jesus uttered those words, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. He set the example for us. Now, I'm not saying it's easy. This is, this is not what I'm saying. This is not easy at all because forgiveness takes a lot of work. It really does. But he set the example for us. And in the Bible, in Matthew 5, verse 44, it says, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. That is the mission that we are given. doesn't matter what has been done to us. It doesn't matter, you know, um, what we've been through in life, who's done what to whom. We are supposed to love our enemies and uh, we're supposed to do good even to those people who have forsaken us, right? We're supposed to love our enemies, Matthew 5, verse 44. And we are supposed to release all of those negative Things that we've been call, carrying around because God wants to fill us. He wants to fill his sacred vessels. So we are sacred. He wants to fill our vessels with the peace and the joy and the abundance that he's promised us within the Bible, within his word. He's promised us all of those things and he just wants us to get rid of all of that stuff, cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us. And I wanted to end this with um, with a prayer. And I'm taking this from um, a book that was actually written by my, um, I call him my, my adopted dad, but he wasn't like officially my adopted dad, right? But um, he's one of the, the men who, who, um, who raised me, Herbert Crawford. And I was going through, and there is a prayer in here that I'd like to share. This book was actually written during the time of COVID. I, I, I did ask him how, you know, what inspired it. And there's a book in here, uh, uh, there's a prayer in here that I'd like to share with you. And it's simply entitled Laying Down Our Burdens. And it comes from, um, there's a Bible passage that, that he shares, Matthew 11, Verse 28 to 30, and it says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the prayer that I'd like to share from here is, all powerful Father God, we come to you today with all our burdens that we have been trying to carry by ourselves and we want to unburden them at your feet. Forgive us, Lord, for trying to go it alone, knowing that we do not have the strength to do so. Lord, we ask you that when our thoughts surge up and seek to shake our faith in you, and when our anxieties and worries disturb our peace of mind, remind us, Father, to bring everything to you in prayer and to rest them at your feet. We pause to give you thanks, Lord, that you have been so willing to bear all of our burdens, no matter how heavy our burdens are. Thank you that you have told us to cast all our cares on you and that you will take care of everything. Lord, you are the only one with whom we can call in difficult and challenging times such as these. And we thank you, Father, that we can bring all of our requests and burdens to you and feel comfortable that you will indeed honor all the promises you have in store for us. Amen. I know that that was a little bit longer than five minutes, but I trust that you've been blessed by the message that I feel that you know, God wanted wanted me to share. And like I said, I'll be tagging um, someone else who's going to follow with the Thrive in Five. And I will also be tagging the channel that's going to be hosting these Thrive in Five videos. May God bless you. May God continue to keep you and to make his face shine upon you from this day forth and forevermore. Amen.